Now, modes can be great, right? Modes can allow you to have a lot of functionality in digital products. But do you think modes might possibly cause problems sometimes? Yeah, I hope the answer is yes, because the title of my slide is Problems with Modes. All right, so what are some problems that we can encounter with modes? One, of course, is, is yes. Right, because of consistency. It can be difficult for the user to remember what mode am I in? What is this going to do when I am in this mode? So did I give you the example of um, the uh, Outlook, the web-based Outlook in a browser? Did I give you that example? I don't remember if I include it here. Uh, let's see, do I keep it? Okay, no. Okay, let me give you the, this is an example that I have to deal with all the time. So as faculty at FIU, for my main FIU account, they use Outlook. The, out, the, uh, in, the browser interface is the in, interface that comes with Outlook. When you are using a browser and you want a new window, what do you, what do you press? A new window? Control a new window. Control N. Control N. Get a new window, type in what you want. So here I am, I am in my browser. I'm used to control N because that's what's consistent for me across my browsers. I am using my, the Outlook and I hit control N, what do you think happens? Okay, I, I, I couldn't hear you guys at the same time. What do you think happens? Maybe a new email. I get a new message. I don't get a new browser window. I get a new message. Why? Because when I am using Outlook for the web in my browser, now it's a different mode. And I can tell you, let's see, I've been here at FIU for, what, two and a half years now? Still do it. All the time. So it can cause problems with usability in that way. Other things that might cause problems. What about like toggles? Toggles could be an issue, right? You guys know what a toggle is, right? Yeah, you turn something on or off, kind of like a light switch, toggle a light switch. Well, depending on how you actually word the title of your toggle and how you actually word whether you are switching from one mode to the other can really cause problems, right? So. We can do two things. We can either label them with adjectives that describe the state, like on and off, or verbs, which tell you the action that you're going to perform by, by hitting it. Now, in general, what you actually find is that users tend to have fewer problems if you label it with adjectives. Right? In other words, that describes the state that's affected as opposed to the object. So if we look at a light switch, let's say you have a, something that's similar to a light switch in your program, and it says on, and to click it you, have to, you would click off. What do you think on means? Well, most of the time it'll mean that it's actually on right now, and if I click it, it'll turn off. But have you ever encountered a program where it's the opposite, where instead they label the button as if you want to turn it off, now you have to click it. So that's a problem. Now there are better solutions, of course, such as radio buttons. Makes it real clear. For this radio button, the light is on. This one, the light is off. Make sense? Now let's take a look at another mode that we tend to forget about. The caps lock. Our favorite, right? Especially if you are used to uh, staring at your fingers or you do hunt and peck as you're typing and then you look up and realize that you just wrote an entire long email where you're yelling at the people. I know, isn't that fun? All right, so how do we usually know when the cap locks is on? There's a little light somewhere. I'm sure it's on here somewhere. Oh, yes, it's over here where I'm not looking. See, cap locks. 
on this side of the keyboard. Where is it? Over here. Now, how many of you have gone to a site where you have to type in your password and you type it in and they're like, yep, incorrect password. Hmm. Type a little slower. Incorrect password. Hmm. Now you do hunt and peck. I know it's right. Incorrect password. And then what do you find out? Your caps lock is on. Right? So in that case, the cap locks is actually changing your mode. And you don't know it. Yes? Well, sometimes they, they uh, warn you that the caps lock is on before you start typing. Right. Now, these days, more often, you're going to have, you're going to warn someone. Your cap locks is on. Your password is case sensitive. Remember that. So in that case, what's good about that? It prevents you from screwing up, yes. What's happening with your attention? Why does that work better than a little light on the keyboard? Because you actually shift to make sure they're not, while well, light, you kind of ignore it. Right, so the light, you're, you mean, you're ignoring it. You're not paying attention to that, but you're paying attention to what you're typing on the screen. Right, so your locus of attention is where? Shift. It's on the screen, not on some light on the opposite side of the keyboard. So there are solutions to a lot of these, but do you think that when people initially started having this problem with cap locks, did they initially have that little message that tells you when your cap locks is on? No. They actually added that because people were having so many problems. Because of this change in modes where we weren't aware of which mode we were in. So as you mentioned, this. so we can see that modes you know, can be great, right? They can help you provide a lot more functionality, but they do have problems. But there are some individuals, such as Norman, one of the uh, fathers of usability, or some will claim one of the fathers of usability, who really believes that you should not use modes unless you have to. So he actually came up with three ways of reducing mode errors. The first is don't have modes. Right? So do you think that will work if we just never have any modes? Yeah, not so much. It'd be nice if it works, if you have something that's simple enough, but a lot of times it's just not practical not to have modes. So if you do have modes, you want to ensure that the modes are distinctly marked so that it is clear to the user what mode they are in. It needs to be very obvious. It needs to be the user's locus of attention. A third thing you can do is to make sure that commands required by different modes are not the same. So that a command that is issued in the wrong mode is not going to cause you problems, or at least not cause you major problems. Now this, again, is also not always practical. But particularly for commands that are very commonly used. In this case, you want to make sure that you do not take a command that is commonly used in a different mode and have it manifest different behavior in, in your mode, such as in Control-N. Control right. Now, Modes can restrict your scope of activity. You can use it not only to expand capabilities, but to limit what people can do. So an example of this is how many of you have ever used some of these um, advanced uh, graphic, it used to be Canvas, I don't know what the, these days what it is. Some of these, these is advanced drawing programs, graphical programs, where you can draw very, tech, you can make very technical drawings. None of you? OK, all right. Well, anyway, in those, they have different modes, right? They have, a, uh, they have modes where you can actually edit. They have modes where you, can act, you are actually creating things and adding things. And one of the problems years ago with these programs is that there would be certain commands that they would only allow you to do when you are in editing mode. The problem was they didn't make it real obvious when you were in editing mode. You were supposed to double click. 
And how do you think they indicated that you were in there, then in editing mode? They changed the colors of these teeny tiny little squares up in the corners at the ends of your, your drawing, which is oh so great when you're zoomed in and can't see them. And then you're sitting there and you're trying to edit something and it's not working. So what they were doing was they were trying to help eliminate errors, but it caused a usability problem. So you do need to use them very, very carefully. Now, actually I don't have to give you the example. I gave you the example already. I knew I had it in here somewhere. 